next video will be for radial nerve block. Radial nerve block is useful when there are significant injuries to the hand or involving numerous digits. A lot of people think that this might be a block that's useful for a distal radius fracture, but that's really not what it's used for. It's used for providing anesthesia to the hand. The distribution is demonstrated here in the first two digits and half of the third digit around onto the extensor compartment of the palm and then part of the thumb. If there were an injury in that area, a large laceration, perhaps um, radial nerve block can be very useful for providing good anesthesia in this area. Traditionally, this has been reported to be poorly effective when done in a blind approach. And the reason for that is that the radial nerve branches unpredictably quite proximal to the wrist. And so a traditional approach is not very effective. However, with an ultrasound, what we can do is try to find the radial nerve by following the radial artery. So here you can see in the center of the screen the radial artery. And we're going to track the radial artery proximally, maintaining a view on the radial artery. And as we look at the radial artery, eventually the radial nerve will track adjacent to the radial artery and be visualized. So we can visualize here that the radial nerve is adjacent to the radial artery, but it's not as easily visualized as it might be more proximally. So I like to carry my scan through more proximally, past the mid forearm to near the elbow to visualize the radial nerve even better. Here you can see an excellent visualization of the radial nerve with the radial artery off to the left of the screen. So this is the area that I will like to use to perform the block. What I like to do now is use a sterile marking pen and mark the region so that I know where I can put the ultrasound when I start the procedure. After doing that and then reestablishing view on the nerve, you have to get the equipment that you're going to use. There are a couple of different options for needle equipment to use here. One is a traditional nerve block needle like this. What this allows is fine control of the needle, but the problem is when using an ultrasound approach, the needle, the operator cannot direct the needle and direct the anesthetic at the same time. So a helper is required to help the operator. For blocks performed in the forearm, because the distances are small, it's oftentimes easier to use a control syringe such as this, which allows the operator good control over the syringe while using a traditional 27 gauge needle of one and a half inches in length, which allows for access to the nerve. Maintaining the nerve in the cross section on the screen allows for positioning of the needle in the longitudinal direction, which allows for the easiest visualization of the needle. This is different from the approach that one might take in bringing the needle perpendicularly, which does not allow for that level of safety margin. So when you bring your needle in in the longitudinal approach, it's oftentimes tempting to put the needle right where the needle, where the transducer contacts the skin. But oftentimes it's easier to drop down a centimeter or two and bring the needle in longitudinally underneath that, which gives a nice straight view of the needle as it approaches the nerve. The goal is to encircle the nerve in anesthetic, which allows for a full anesthesia provided to the distribution of the radial nerve within the hand. Sometimes it is necessary to rotate the arm slightly maintaining the view on the nerve in order to bring the needle in at the proper angle. And if this is necessary, this can usually be done without any difficulty by just rotating the patient's arm.